Nintendo recently announced a new Mario Strikers for the Switch, and if you happened to see the trailer, you probably thought to yourself, wow, that is a really cool art style. Now, 9 times out of 10, when I have that thought about a game, it is usually because of a shader that they've used. And this just so happened to be yet another instance of that. So as you see here, this is my attempt at the Mario Strikers Hyper Strike shader. And if you want to create your own shader using Unity, you can really do this in one of two ways. You can either code it yourself from scratch using HLSL, which is the high level shader language, or you can use Unity Shader Graph, which is a more visual tool. And for learning purposes, I challenge myself to strictly use the Unity Shader Graph to recreate this effect. So before I break down the effect and how I recreated it, it is probably worth mentioning that this is not going to be a typical tutorial more than it is actually going to be me pointing you to YouTubers that actually know what they are talking about. Because after countless hours of trying to learn shaders, there's one thing that I have learned and it is that I am still really bad at shaders and I have no right trying to teach this. So let's just get started. So to start, you can see here that it goes from a typical 3D model and snaps into like a tune shader. And on this tune shader, you can see that there is what I would call a rim light and then a kind of normal color, then a shaded color, and then almost like an inverse rim light that kind of adds color. And in this case, it's red. Now I didn't add this, but I thought it was interesting to point out that the lighting and shadows completely change between the 3D model and the tune shader. Other than the tune shader, you'll notice that there are two outlines. The black outline not only goes around the entire model, but also on the interior around stuff like the chin and nose. The gray outline, however, is just completely on the exterior of the model. Lastly, all of these effects are moving with some sort of random noise. Now the first thing I did was pull in the Jammo character from the Mix and Jam channel, which I will link above if you haven't seen that channel, I would highly recommend it. And I did that for two reasons really. One, normally I would pull a character from Mix Ammo, but I think Jammo fit the Nintendo theme more than any of these characters. And two, I just really like the Mix and Jam channel and wanted to pay some sort of respect to it. I then started with the Toon Shader, which I got from the Minions Art tutorial which I will link above. And you can watch that to get a breakdown of how everything works and she will do a much better job of explaining it. But I did make some slight tweaks that I wanted to quickly show. So looking at a shader graph is a bit of a mess and I would recommend watching her video if you want to know what each of these pieces are doing in detail. But I'll quickly give you a run through and explain the part that I changed. So the part that's really worth calling out here is we grab the normal vector from our object and then take the dot product of that with the lighting from the scene. And you'll see here that this tune shading custom function is really just some scripting to get the lighting data from your scene because there is no actual native way of getting that out of shader graph just yet. And when you dot product them together, it gives you the like the that'll give you the data you need to determine the light in the scene hitting your specific model. And then she basically multiplies it by this Fresnel effect to get this outer rim glow. Now the part that I added was what I was talking about earlier was getting almost the inverse of the rim effect. So what you do is just negate the rim light and then it'll give you the rim light almost in the opposite direction. And then I added a color here so that you can change that color of the inverse rim light. And then I add the rim light and the inverse rim light to the sample texture to get this. Then when you take that shader and apply it to a material, you'll now be able to adjust this inverse rim light color here, which in my instance, I made it pink, but you can see here, I can change it to any color that I want. And that just gives the ability to add color to that shaded area. Next for the black outline, I followed the tutorial from YSA Unity, which I'll link above here. And the reason I chose this was because it was pretty much the simplest way to get an outline that I could find using Shader Graph. And the basics is it just takes a duplicate of your model and kind of expands it out just a bit and makes it completely one solid color. Um, and it being behind your model makes it appear to be an outline. So here's the shader graph for the outline and again I would recommend just watching the tutorial because it'll explain in greater detail all the individual steps that they went through. And the only difference here at the bottom you'll notice that I added in 
essentially a sample noise which kind of moves over time. And I multiply that by noise value that you can change to increase or decrease. And then I take that and multiply that with the outline itself. And again, that's just not something I came up with on my own. I happen to remember seeing this on a Unity video that I'll link here. And again, that will probably explain things better than I could. Now with those two things on the model, it looks something like this. Now obviously this noise on the outline shader is not perfectly matching up with the Mario shader. However, I think it looks pretty good and something I'll like to improve upon as I learn more. Because if you notice from the Mario video, it looks much more like a stylized uh, drawing almost. But trying to get that effect onto the outline itself, I couldn't quite figure out. So I decided to leave that out and probably revisit this later. And lastly for the gray outline, you basically just do the same thing again. Now since I only wanted the gray outline around the outside, I did a little cheat and I basically made two cameras. One camera rendered the tune shader with the black outline and the second camera just rendered the gray outline behind those two. And that seemed to work out pretty good. I tried to use the forward rendering system itself and for some reason that was still causing the gray outline to kind of clash through the model so I ended up not going that route. And that's it, that's the final result. And I know it's not perfect but it was a fun challenge to break down a shader that you see and work out how you would kind of recreate that yourself and follow all the various tutorials online. And I know I didn't quite go in depth into how all these various pieces work but again all these other tutorials already do a pretty good job of explaining this. But hopefully you got something from this video on how to kind of assemble this knowledge together to recreate stuff like this. And I'll link the GitHub project down below so you can play around with yourself and see exactly what each piece is doing. And if you happen to be more familiar with shaders or maybe know how to better recreate some of these things that I was talking about, please let me know down in the comments because I would like to maybe do a second iteration on this to get it closer to the actual Mario shader as much as possible. Now before I end off, it is probably worth mentioning that I would not recommend doing this. I do not think this is a very optimized solution because obviously there are three different versions here of the same model and two of them are just to do different outlines. So if you want to know how you would maybe do this for a real life example, I would suggest watching this video here which is by the making stuff look good channel and that channel is probably one of the best channels you're going to find for coding shaders on youtube so i would also highly recommend checking that out if you want to learn a little bit more about shaders and that is all if you liked the video please hit that like and subscribe button and i'll see you in the next one